bros, welcome to another video on my channel. This is a very different video from everything else you've seen here. And if you're new, welcome. And I'm here to talk about Fix FIFA. Before starting, apologies for the weird lighting. I, I know it's weird, but I had only time to record this before work in the morning. So I woke up super early today. I wrote a text. I did a lot of research yesterday on Reddit about what people want from it, about what what people are talking, what people are saying, and I decided to make this video to inform you guys, my followers, and also to create conversation with new people. And I'm here to talk about this movement that has been going on. It has been gaining a lot of momentum online. Basically, it's about play a lot of players being unhappy with a lot of different things in the game Reaching a point where we are saying enough is enough The FIFA online community in reddit in the EA forums are starting to get super vocal about this There's videos coming out. There's a lot of threads being made and that voice has been growing stronger and stronger It has been reaching various articles out there like real news articles and I think we got to Kicker which is amazing it's a very important uh, sports outlet in Germany one of the best one of the most respected ones and they're talking about fix FIFA and what's happening in FIFA so I'm a very small youtuber I just started I have a I don't really have a voice in the FIFA scene at all but you know what every voice counts in this and I'm lending mine to the cause I'm part of this big group of FIFA players that wants a change and wants to make something about it. So as I'm adding my own voice to the cause, I'm going to tell you what has been talked about and also my own personal opinions on this. Again, uh, the sun is right on my face. There's literally nothing I can do about it. If I, if I try to change the lighting, I'll make it worse. I'm sorry for that again. Let's just continue the video. So anyway, I want you people watching the video to really think about all these points. And if you want to make a change, you have to make something, you know, give your own thoughts, do a tweet with the hashtag fix FIFA, speak out and uh, vote with your wallets, vote with your time. EA will be paying very close attention to what's, what money is being spent on, on FIFA points. This is our opportunity to say, no, I'm not buying any FIFA points. And I'm avoiding playing the game in general. Anyway, more importantly, have a voice and speak your mind. So for you guys that might know me already, you know that I'm a very good example of a normal FIFA player. I'm, I'm not exactly like most of the other YouTubers in the sense that I have a full-time job. I have a ton of responsibilities. And for me, doing my FIFA channel, it's just a hobby. It's something that I, I loved FIFA so much and I love to play in the weekend league and this is just a hobby. I just like and love football the way you do. I, like, I love to play this game. I don't have the time, I don't have the skills <laughs> that other YouTubers have. I'm a very average player. So I'm very relatable to you viewers. Basically I'm one of you. I'm pretty much the same as you. Now I want to make clear, this is not a call for hate against EA. We love the game in the end, right? We want to make it better. We don't want to destroy EA. We just don't want to be ignored, which we were being ignored for such a long time. And I feel like this is the time to change that. To see, to change the way we are seen and finally have some good feedback from them because the attention is on us. So this FIFA could be amazing. It could be perfect. It could be the best football game ever and it's so frustrating because EA are just not listening to the players enough. They're keeping a broken game broken and they continue to break it more. EA has, let's be real, EA has been doing an amazing job with Ultimate Team it, in the last couple of years and it, it improved amazingly. I was never an Ultimate Team player, I played here and there but my thing was career mode or playing against friends and for the past two years, I'm a hardcore FIFA Ultimate Team player. That just says how good uh, and addictive this game mode is. EA has been doing a great job with foot, but there's this, there is this major flaw in their approach. And this is about communication. Communication from EA to the players, to the player base, to their fans, which is non-existent right now. 
And this redditor put it perfectly, I'm sorry if I'm about to butcher your username, but uh, Kutzen Huna. And he says, it's totally unacceptable in this day and age that we don't get any sort of response for issues being raised again and again over weeks, months, sometimes even years. And then he pro proceeds to give an example where David Myler tweets them directly about the weekend league. Uh, David Myler is this professional football player he plays for Ireland and he plays for Hull City he has a huge presence in FIFA he has a lot of followers and he has a very credible voice people like him because first of all he has a cool personality and second of all even being a pro football player so he's quite busy he manages to be good enough at the game to face the best and be able to beat them this guy could be a FIFA ambassador it's an amazing opportunity for EA to get in touch with us through him or to him and as a result to us. It's a huge chance wasted. This is just an example. Maybe they read it and thought about it, but no communication is a huge flaw. If there's one change I will do about EA and FIFA is to have a better communication with fans. Which leads me to, in my opinion, the second major point in this Fix FIFA talk, which is transparency. There's a lot of things that year after year are still a mystery for all of us players. We deserve to know how some things work in the game exactly. And we need to know why EA does ch some changes and what did they do exactly. Again, this is part of the whole communication problem. But there are some questions we should get answers for what they are. Some examples again, this is just a very resumed video, but stats. What does every single stat do? There's some stats I don't have a clue how they work or I kind of have an idea, but there's no official way of, there's no official statement of how they work. For example, sprint speed and acceleration are quite obvious how, how they work. Sprint speed is like the speed, acceleration is how fast you get to the speed, right? But how does agility, body height, body weight, body type, how do all of these things affect speed? Because it does. Having a fast Lukaku and having a fast Mane with the same sprint speed is not the same. And for example, what's the difference in having a better short passing value? What does this change exactly? Is the success rate different? Is the speed of the animation being done faster? And how does stamina or stamina affect everything else? If you're at the end of the game and your player is under 50 stamina, what exactly happens to the screen speed? What happens to the passing accuracy? What, what's the effect of stamina? And traits, flair, what, what does... What's the difference between a player who has flair or not, uh, gameplay-wise? Then stats take us to cam styles and chemistry. Why don't we know exactly what having a low cam team uh, affects in the game? Do they communicate worse with each other, the players? Are they less organized? Do their stats decrease? And what stat changes does every cam style do exactly? If we put the hunter card on something, how likely how exactly are their shots better? How is their sprint speed? We can't see that in the game. Another thing we need cl a clear answer for is the patches. Every patch has a very general and very vague patch notes. We need to know, we deserve to know what changed and why did they change it. By now it's pretty much common knowledge that the first patch changed the gameplay completely. It changes how the game feels, how the gameplay is, it feels like, it used to feel like a really refreshing version of FIFA, there was something new, there were some new additions, dribbling was amazing, it was really fun, it wasn't perfect of course, uh, there was the, the goalkeepers couldn't defend for their lives some shots and way too many long shots were going in, but those were the main two problems, everything else was, was great. And then they released the first patch, they didn't tell us exactly what they changed, but we know that the gameplay ch reverted back to something more like FIFA 17 was, where the AI uh, helps you tons on defending. Like nowadays, it's better not even to defend and just control your midfielder and let the AI do the rest, and that's ridiculous. Before, it was so cool because you were in control. If you were good at defending, you could stop attacks. And if you weren't, you would pay for it. And that's just, you know, normal in a game. If you're bad at something, you have to pay for it. 
This reduced the skill gap by a ton. But the worst thing about this is that we were never told exactly what changed. They never said, hey, we changed this because of that. Instead, we're left guessing and figuring out what changed. Yeah, you could have said, hey, we found that this style of play creates too big of a skill gap and it's hard for worse players to enjoy the game. And due to a lot of complaints, we decided to revert back to a similar version of what we had before. It didn't mean that we would agree with it, but I would be happy with the communication effort. We would know what was going on, and maybe with that type of statement, we would understand EA what, why they did this. And by not doing this, it just feels like they are betraying us. So, but fix FIFA. This is not fix EA only, it's fix FIFA. What would we change exactly on FIFA? And again, this has a lot of my own opinions on it, but I, a lot of it I took from the general consensus I see around the Fix FIFA movement, uh, especially on Reddit. There were countless other posts you, you should, you know, get in there. Anyway, what will we change? What are those changes that we're all crying for? I'll start with, I'll start with my own personal beef, and it's the Weekend League format. It's just way too long, it's really unhealthy. I get that it's supposed to be just for the best players and there's that, that and it, there's the qualification match for it, qualification process to get in it, and I love that part because being in the weekend league, it feels special. It's the, it's the mother of all competitions, like I call it. It's, it's not just for anyone who buys FIFA and grabs a controller and qualifies to it, it's not easy. It's not that easy. And I'm not against the qualification thing. But the problem here is that there's not a single other game in the market, competitive or not, when the game decides when you play and when you don't. For the love of God, EA, let players play when they want and when they can. As it stands, you have to complete 40 games in a three day period. One of them is Friday, so it's a weekday. That means people will have school, people will have work. And I'm not even counting people who work on weekends because that's a thing too. And those people can't, just can't play weekend league. They don't have the time. So 40 games, let's average 15 minutes each. That's 10 hours of gameplay to put during a, a three-day period. And if you have plans Friday night, well, then there's a two-day two period. Then it's five hours a day. That's, and it's not really five hours because there's the, all the bits and bobs you have to fix before the game. A lot of games go to extra time, so in the end we're talking way more than 10 hours. When you have to take care of injuries, contracts, when you decide to buy a new player and change your formation and try something new, all this takes time. There's even the pauses and breaks that a human has to do. I can't just decide to play 10 hours straight or even 5 hours straight each day. And in the end what I've found, because uh, so I work full time during the week and on the weekend, you know, it's the time I have for my personal life more, and FIFA, and of course YouTube. And for me, in my per uh, in my case, there's the this extra time that I need for YouTube to record stuff, edit stuff, comment stuff. And it's really overwhelming. Believe me, it uh, it breaks my weekends. And in the end, what ha what ends up happening, even without YouTube, is I plan my weekend around the weekend league and not. You know have life and then plan my weekend league around it it's it's the opposite it's it's crazy when you think about it so i will have a lot of suggestions on how it will be i wish i worked at ea to implement them but I, I don't want to focus on that i want to fix on the problems i want to voice what's wrong in the game and not come up with solutions for everything but i just want you to get that the weekend league format is wrong is unhealthy it's just not something good and people will get tired of it and and if the first year was a novelty on the second year i i can feel people are st starting to play it less already because it's so frustratingly long give us more time to play less games i don't know just not this if you have a different ranking system and matchmaking maybe you don't you don't need so many games to decide uh what who stands where in the ranking ladder system. If you have something like Divisions, there's other examples from other games. I'm sure everyone is really aware of how that works, like StarCraft, for example, or League of Legends. I never played that, but 
you get my point. And next on my list is the momentum or dramatic moments or EAs, whatever you want to call it. There are so many names for it. I remember before FIFA 18 coming out that I read one of the new features for the FIFA it was the introduction of dramatic moments where not just the best, but any player could score amazing goals. And that, oh man, when I read that, I knew it would be bad. Everyone who has played Ultimate Team online or offline has experienced games when your players are not just as good as normal, they feel heavy, they do turn like trucks, they stop doing runs, they'll fail easy passes, they'll fail easy interceptions. But for the but for our opponent, opponents it feels exactly the opposite. Any shot can go win, they can just run faster, they're stronger, they're deadlier. Of course the opposite also happens, sometimes it's in our side, but we don't notice as much when it's in your side. Everything goes your way and you just feel like you're amazing, but sometimes if you think about it, you can really see the mistakes that your opponent is making and shouldn't be making. And like every pass you do ends up in your players and you can just tell when that's happening. I had wins that I felt like something was just going my way. And when I feel a clear change of momentum, it can be during a game, for example, after a team scores, there's this kick of boost uh, thing going on. I'm sure you've heard of it, but a lot of the games are scored right after kickoff. Like we can be 70, 80 minutes of a game without scoring any goals, and then one of us scores, and then the next like kickoff starts and he scores, and then kickoff again scores 2 1, 2 2, and it's, it's crazy. It doesn't, and you can feel when the other player kicks off your defense, your whole team is just acting really weird. Is that a special moment? Is that a dramatic moment? Is that supposed to be in the game? I don't know when it ha and it can f it can change from game to game. I can play like five games and everything is going well. I make a pause, I come back and then everything is against me. Like I just can't win a single game and I don't think it's about me. I can tell it's about the gameplay. Something is different. I don't know when this happens and how this happens. I have my own theories. But it's definitely in the game. It's not just a theory you can find some people talking about online on online forums. Everybody is experiencing it from big to small. It's so obvious that I have started to play thinking about it. It's if it's going my way, I can attack really strong because eventually the ball is going in. If it's against me, I'll hold the ball and play dirty and play safe and not give a chance to my opponent to exploit that. Sometimes I even waste time because I don't want to be affected by this negative, dramatic moment bullshit. And it stops to feel like I'm playing FIFA and it starts to feel like I'm playing this momentum game. And I know EA wants to keep people interested, make the weaker players win sometimes and the stronger players not always win. That will be boring, right? But keep that out of the competitive modes. Keep that out of ultimate team or at least food champs and keep it out of squad battles. Because for me, the best thing is that we, without any of EA's interference, and it's quite ironic, true momentum and genuine dramatic moments will happen because it's, it's football in the end. It's, we're human. It's just... It's just human nature and luck in general. Like, luck should be in the game. I'm not saying it shouldn't. But not decided by the game. There's a big difference. If you're better than your opponent, you should win most of the times. With equal skill, if you're playing someone with the same skill as you, but you have a way better team, most of the times you would win. Let the exceptions happen naturally, because they will. And then there's another point where I'm kind of reluctant to speak about and you better get your tinfoil hats, it's about packs. Now, I don't agree with the pack luck needing to be better than it is right now. I feel like having special players should feel very rare. How annoying would it be if everyone had either Ronaldo or Messi or Maradona or Pele or even <laughs> all four of them? And I think there's a good balance right now because you don't really need to put real cash on the game to have a great team. Because there's SBCs, there's weekend league rewards, there's squad battle rewards. You get a lot of free packs. You have a lot of chance to pack something great. 
and you have a lot of chance to get money and with that money maybe invest and build your team up from my own experience so far i will say the average team in the uh, ultimate team in the weekend league is very expensive it's about one million coins I, it's normal to play against teams worth like three four million coins of course there's also teams like 100k coins but i feel like there's a, a good balance right now in the game between how many rare cards there are if we increase backlog they will be everywhere what i don't like right now it it, it feels all kind of rigged i i don't want to make uh, my crazy theories exposed right here but i think packs are kind of rigged and again this goes to back to transparency we need to know the pack odds and we have to feel like packs are being random and sometimes just like gameplay it doesn't feel random it feels like maybe a new player or someone who just put money for the first time in the in their account or someone who has been having a bad run of games and this happened to me i opened packs before, after losing a lot of games and man amazing packs but normally i do all the spcs i do all the stuff and there's absolutely nothing and i can just tell when there's nothing to be packed anyway maybe it's just me maybe this is not the general idea shared by the community but this is how i feel i feel like some stuff are rigged and they shouldn't be it would be great to have the feeling of what the odds are like and the general sense of fairness in packed players and two extra points i want to add before wrapping this up is two really easy changes i i think if uh, ea wants to fix fifa this will be the easiest way to start with and it's two very basic errors that are in the game since day one and we've been very vocal about it but they haven't been fixed months after release and it's the kids numbers in ultimate team because if you have your team and you give numbers to all of your players and then one game you make a substitution or you change something or even on the phone app you go back and all the numbers are wrong your, your goalkeeper is number six and your striker is number two it's, it's crazy how hasn't this been fixed i would love to give crazy numbers to my players like 44 90 85 like in the american football league nfl but i'm going i'm not going through the effort if it gets reset every time and i even gave up giving my hui cost a number 10 because he always gets number 9 or 11 sooner or later so that's one and the other two is the ea catalog thing you know the the thing where you're supposed to want to win experience and then you buy items it's not working this year you can't you're stuck you can't level up you can't win new things so people like me i have a new account and i have a tiny transfer pile transfer list size and i can't do anything about it and it's it's unfair because i've been you know realistically i've been working for it and i still am stuck with this there's also the coin boost there's a lot of things that he has in the game and people are not taking advantage of it because experience can't be gained and this sounds like a super easy fix i thought it would be fixed like a few days after release but it's november and it's still there it's still broken anyway guys i hope you enjoyed this I, this video i have to run to work i'm late i decided to wake up earlier and write my text about this and just spill it out to you i hope you enjoyed i hope you agree and remember guys this is our opportunity to have a voice so be vocal about it be respectful this is not a campaign against the a this is just us uh, fifa lovers football lovers wanting a football game and a good a better football game and we are frustrated because we can get there but but we're not there and we feel ignored please stop ignoring us let's make a change so guys thanks for watching this video i will see you next time bye bye